Winter is coming, and it's not Hoth or Starkiller Base, but we'll get into why in just a little bit. Welcome back to Star Wars News Nets, the Resistance broadcast. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube so you're alerted anytime our episodes post. I'm your host, John Hoey. There is so much to get into today around the galaxy. This is going to be a fun one, so welcome aboard. We're going to talk about the EW coverage of Solo, the creators of Game of Thrones writing and producing a new series of Star Wars movies, aside from what Ryan Johnson's going to be doing, and we're going to answer your Solo Twitter questions. Joining me today, as always, James Bainey, Patrick Covey, and Bill Sheehy. What's up, fellas? I'm so excited this week. We have lots of news, and it's not stopping. It, the, the floodgates are open, as as our uh, special guest of honor, uh, so to speak, for Newsnet is saying. So I'm excited. Oh, my gosh. How many Star Wars products are we going to get, guys? This is ridiculous. When is the Bob Iger train going to stop? Stay tuned to find out. Remember last week when there, like, wasn't anything to report, and now we're just showered with news. Ready to talk. Let's get it started. And started we will, but first, we have some poll results to go over. And we asked you, after watching the solo teaser trailers dozens of times, what are your early thoughts on Alden Ehrenreich as Han Solo? And 16% of you out there said, I'm not feeling it at all. 20% said, nailed it, he is Han. And this one, uh, 64% said, you need to see more footage. So a lot of people are not quite sold yet. Were you guys surprised that two-thirds of people are just not ready to uh, say one way or the other on this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's an iconic role, and a lot of people didn't really want to see anybody else besides Harrison Ford do it, so that doesn't surprise me at all. I'm kind of on the other spectrum where it's, I think, I, the vibe I get right now is that he is Han, but I understand this poll. Yeah, I actually put the twenty percent that he nailed it and he is Han. But mm-hmm. the honest truth, if you're if you're understanding movies, is that sixty four percent is the real answer. We don't yep. have enough of a sample size here to really make a judgment on a two hour movie. So that it really is the correct answer. But I I, I want to be positive, and right now his his what we've seen so far, I'm I'm accepting it. I was actually on the fence about this. I need to still see a little bit more footage. Uh, but after today's uh, big uh, group of EW articles have come out and whatnot, I am really starting to feel maybe a little bit more towards, yeah, this is the right guy that we've been really needing from the beginning. But when we posted the poll, I was still definitely on the fence. So I had to go with the uh, real and honest answer there. Yeah, we threw that up there just to see what the instant immediate reactions were based off of the teasers. And you guys were outspoken saying, nope, not yet. We need more stuff from uh, from this movie. <laughs> uh, the best comment, and this is this guy's become our comment MVP, so I was a little hesitant to give it to him again, but Evan at Harris Harris F9, who got uh, like 10 likes, so he said, I don't think he is Han, and I don't think I need him to be. I'm liking what I'm seeing from his interpretation of young Han Solo that stands apart from what we knew, know and love. So good job there, Evan. And now without, we have a lot to get into so, without wasting any more time, let's fire up the news net. What's up, James? Well, you may remember him from such things as the special guest on Resistance Broadcast episode 94, or maybe more unrecognizably as the senior editor for Entertainment Weekly, whatever. <laughs> However you may have heard of him, he is the Walter Cronkite of Star Wars stories. Anthony Bresnikin is back again, this time with a slew of stories for the upcoming Solo, A Star Wars Story. As Anthony states in one of his articles, there has been a lot of worry about what was going on with this film because we have yet to see anything, not even an image for the marketing. While the floodgates have opened and it is now starting to fill in with a whole week of solo details, starting with his article revealing the main story as well as new photos and character details. So Bill, I'm going to start with you. Out of the nine exclusive Entertainment Weekly photos that we got, which one pops out to you the most? Well, first of all, shout out to the president. Love his story. Does great work. But for me, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to say two uh, photos really kind of stand out to me. Number one is the one with Donald Glover as Lando, and he's doing playing what I think is Sabacc, and we've gotten a little glimpse of it. Yeah, exactly. 
We got a little glimpse of it in the trailer. We got that smile. But this is, it feels like an artist's rendering. Like, if I, if I wanted a picture of young uh, Lando Calrissian, this is the exact pose and everything that I'd want him to do in it. He looks charming. He's smiling. His hand's a little bit to the right, right there, or to the left, whatever. Directions are hard. Um, <laughs> and it just, it feels like in a picture, they nailed the character. So I'm excited for that. And then my other one is to see um, the deck or the, the cabin of the of the Falcon with uh, Beckett and Chewie and Han. And to see just like, and people have been putting on Twitter about the comparisons between where it is in A New Hope and where it is in Solo. Man, we've talked about how pristine it is, but I think I don't think it's uh, as prevalent or as the change is as prevalent as it is here where you can see just how much that uh, solo will eventually change the falcon so those two really kind of stand out to me and i'm once again i'm so excited for lando and for this movie patrick what pictures stand out to you i really like that uh falcon cockpit one bill was just talking about uh it looks like han and chewy are playing bumper cars and having like the best time of their life yeah uh-huh. it looks like a dave and buster's ad it honestly. really does <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they're in the arcade having a good time uh but this that also a perfect perfect analogy this is a throwback back to when han in a new hope was going like yahoo like having a great time that really just uh, defines that moment and then i also like that photo with uh, Alden Ehrenreich as Han Solo and Amelia Clark as Kira. It looks like Bill Sheehy at some sort of like networking conference, and these two are just having drinks and having a good old time. And thank you. I really, I really <laughs> think that uh, I'm confused. You, but I'm okay. saying you got hair like him, man. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, I will accept. You should that. totally cosplay as Han uh, this May. It would really look good. <laughs> Pat, how did you feel about the cover? I love this cover to death. As somebody who's recently started collecting some of these magazines and stuff as part of like my future uh, collection and whatnot, mm-hmm. um, this one really stood out to me. You almost have like this back to back, almost like um, oh god, what's that movie? Quentin Tarantino, like the Kill Bill sort of like pose. Django oh, Unchained. Hey, good to hear. Django Unchained is another one. Yep. Uh, so mm-hmm. really cool stuff there. The back to back. Gotta love it. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see more photos here in the near future. I bugged out, and I tweeted about the one of them on the back of the train uh, with mm-hmm, their mm-hmm. With, with their little goggles on, and they're just like, yeah. it's Chewy, and, like, doing stuff. He's do- he's not flying. <laughs> they're doing yeah, stuff. He's doing so John, stuff. Exactly. I- I'm going to jump in here, too. We also got the story details, and it kind of lays out that there. this is kind of a Western movie. I mean, this is there's a train yeah. heist here, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. How are yeah. you feeling about that? I love the idea of that. Um, it's something that we haven't really gotten too much into in Star Wars, and it's something that we could see Han and Chewie doing. And just like I joked that I could see the two of them years down the road in a New Hope era at a bar somewhere drinking, saying like, remember that time we were on the back of that train trying to steal that Convey X and steal the thing? Like, that is so perfect. Like, it's one of those moments that are going to bond them together. And something that stood out for me was Larry Kazan when he was talking in his interviews with Bresnikan. He said, this movie is a bromance it is how Han loves Chewie, and uh, that's exactly what I needed to hear. I might be a little too on the nose for some people, but I don't know who wouldn't want that, and what it, that's what this really should be all about. I am actually worried about this scene a little bit, because even though this is a new sort of like train heist, we also got uh, a heist in Rogue One, in a sense, as well. So I really hope Larry Kasdan wrote this well, script so that it's it's definingly different than Rogue One, but still... You know, still fulfills that that like heist vibe. I think I think the difference and, is it's more espionage with Rogue One with like mm-hmm. spy stuff, where this is more just like cowboys and 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 the Western vibe of yeah. stealing stuff and and doing it more of an on a criminal vibe than just trying to uh, do an espionage government type of mm-hmm. thievery. To me, it's gonna it's it's gonna be a little bit more. I guess sexy is the word because that was Rogue One was very kind of okay. We've planned this out. This is this this, and I feel like with any kind of soul, if if Han Solo is involved, sure they're gonna have a plan, but that plan is gonna go to hell mm-hmm. really really quickly. So I feel like it's going from there and uh, figuring out okay, how do we solve this after everything's gone to hell? Yeah, I was really surprised to hear how Aaron Reich talked about where Han's at mentally. Um, that threw me a little bit because he said he's an idealist and a dreamer. Um, I was expecting more of a jaded curmudgeon, like kind of like we meet in episode four. So if he's going into this as a dreamer, something's got to happen to him in this movie. And mm-hmm. I think Kira's going to play a role in that. I feel like he's going to go through some kind of heartbreak. She's not in episode four 
or the rest of the movies that he appears in and we never hear about her. So they have to figure out why that's the case. And Emilia Clark talked about that. She said, Oh, I didn't, I'm not in the original trilogy and there's a reason why for that. Right. So she kind of, mm-hmm. she kind of almost pretty much said either she's getting killed or she's going to totally screw him over and just take off. Mm-hmm. So something's going to happen there. And I'm really curious how that's going to all bang out because they grew up together. According to Amelia Clark, these two characters, so there's going to be a lot of history and there's obviously, we're going to find out what the ending is as well. And to go off your point, John, about him being an idealist and being all that, being a dreamer, I really, really like that. And like you said, he he has to, uh, it, there's something's got to happen. But ultimately, in A New Hope, what saves the entire rebellion is that Han ha- is a dreamer and that he that he believes in something and wants to be part of something bigger than himself. So I, I, I want to see what, what caused that. Well, I'm going to ask one more question about the pictures. There is a a particular picture with um, another shot of a pristine Millennium Falcon. Um, John, what was your theory that you proposed about how that thing uh, got so dirty? (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I feel like it has to be... I thought of an immediate reason of how it gets dirty, and it was that Han and Chewie are going to be smuggling spice, going through the Kessel Run. Mm -hmm. They're going to be taking a lot of corners, a lot of turns to make it the 12 parsecs. And those compartments are going to bust open and spice is going to just blow all over into the inside of the Falcon and turn it into a dirty mess. And everyone knows when you get a new pair of sneakers, the moment you get a little bit of dirt on them, it's over. Did they just dirty them up? It doesn't matter. And that's exactly what's going to happen when this spice just goes shooting all over the inside of the Falcon. Lando's going to be pissed, but it's that whole thing. What have you done to my ship? You know what we did? We shot spice everywhere. That's what happened. Yeah, as we unveiled last week, the the Falcon has been around for nine decades, and it's been basically Lando's ship, so he's kept it maybe, you know, in this pristine condition, and he's just kind of loaning it to Han, and that's, after that happens, I don't know, so, um, well, moving on, because we got lots to talk about as this uh, Anthony Bresnikan Entertainment Weekly week happens, um, he got to sit down with uh, a good number of the stars, including Alden Ehrenreich, Donald Glover, Amelia Clark, and Phoebe Waller-Bridge. John, I'm going to throw it right back to you. Did any of these articles provide you with any new or interesting information about the movie? Yeah, I do like what I heard about the droid and that she kind of like pieces herself together with all different parts and that she's very mm. human in a sense in how she acts and she has an attitude personality. So her and Lando are going to have a cool vibe. Uh, like I said about the Amelia Clark stuff, um, she said, quote, something must happen to affect Han as a person. And they explain why Han acts the way he does. I think about how Han acts towards Leia and how he mocks royalty. He keeps saying your highnessness. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Your worshipfulness, you know, whatever, all his made up words about royalty. I have a feeling he's going to be affected by what happens in this movie to explain why he is the way he is in a new hope. So I can see Clark's character maybe being uh, of a higher status than he used to know her. And maybe we'll see him kind of mocking her in this movie and we'll see that carry over into a new hope seamlessly. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. that. In Amelia Clark's interview, though, she says, don't be fooled by all of my royal looking clothes and things like that. Right. She says that, you know, if a person is dressed this way, yet they're still hanging out with like gangsters and lowlifes, then maybe they're not who they, they think they are. So, mm-hmm. um, Bill, I'm throwing to you. I mean, does that present any um, new kind of theories you have about what this character could be? Well, to me, it... I think all of us growing up had that one girl that like we all that was always around that was always you were always friends with and just you grew up and then after you started growing up you started liking them and then you grow apart and then years later when you still have that kind of connection I think that's going to be what Kira is going to be for Han so I just I feel like that's a, a con- an instant connection that they're going to have and I think once you see where Han's gone and once you see where Kira's gone, we'll see where both of them end up and what brings them together again. But like you said, John, I definitely think that whatever happens to Kira in this is going to have a profound effect on him in episodes four and and, and on. I actually want to talk about Lando now because this was very interesting part of the uh, EW articles uh, where the president sat down with Donald Glover and uh, talked about his time working with Billy D. Williams, how they went to lunch and he, he said he had a really good time and how basically Billy D. just said, just be charming. He didn't really have much to say other than that. <laughs> and, and honestly, that's all you can really do if you want to bring out the Lando characters. Be charming. Maybe throw in a couple little facial expressions and things that uh, Lando would do here or there um, and just try to stay relaxed and, and do what you can. He's not very uh, 
he's not very outgoing, but he has a good taste in things, which was uh, something they made sure to tell us. Uh, so that's good to see that, you know, as this Millennium Falcon is pristine, he's keeping it in good condition. He probably has a good taste in, in fine wines and things like that. So uh, I can't wait to see what Lando brings to the table, uh, especially the Sabacc table when we get to that scene. And the other thing about Donald Glover is that it seems like what we have seen him in from whether it be the first uh, TV spot and then later on is that he's doing exactly what Lando should be doing. However, in defense of the fans right now, we have not heard any of his lines in the film yet. So I do want to see a little bit more of what he does. Uh, Maybe in the next trailer, we'll finally get some dialogue from Lando. I mean, can't hope for much more. Yeah, I think there's going to be a stark difference between who Lando Calrissian is and who Han Solo is. They're going to both have similar traits in terms of their swindlingness, if that's a word. Mm-hmm. Um, but We made it a word. I, I am interested in what Lando does in this movie, but I'm really interested in what they do with Han, because if, like I've been saying, if they don't sell Han to us the way we need them to, it's not going to work. And I do, even though they're going back to that trope, I do like the fact that they're saying this guy grew up with no parents, so now he has that... Um, you know, that self-esteem issue where he's just constantly out to prove himself. Uh, like to me, Han's very insecure and he projects his ego to cover up those insecurities and his self-doubt. And we see that very evident in A New Hope. And he takes risks to impress people and earn their respect. And that's where I think the importance of this Beckett character is going to be. He's going to be like his father figure, uh, kind of in a way to replace that void. And what is Beckett? They say he's a crime, a criminal. He's a crime boss. He's a free agent for hire. So he's going to really shape what Han becomes, whether Han realizes that or not. So that's another relationship that we haven't really seen much of besides the, hey, kid, I'm putting together a team. We haven't seen, we're going to see a lot more of that that I think is really going to steer us in a direction as to how Han Solo, the character, is going to be shaped into the way we meet him as Harrison Ford in episode four. Well, we are all excited about Solo coming out in May, um, and we're also looking forward to episode nine. And boy, don't even get me started on the Ryan Johnson trilogy that was announced a while back. I forgot about but, that. But yeah, but that's uh, that's pretty much it, though, as far as the, the future of Star Wars films goes, right? Nope. We got a huge announcement that the Game of Thrones series creators David Benioff and D.B. Weiss will write and produce a new series of Star Wars films. Don't pay Insanity. attention. Insanity. Yeah, it's Old Republic. It's Old Republic. That's not a new trilogy. It's a new series. I have a particular question for each of you uh, revolving around this story. I'm going to start with Pat. How many movies does that mean we're getting? That's a tough question because many fans want to jump to this conclusion that, hey, Game of Thrones is very cinematic in nature and they can do a little bit more short form version of film. And they think that, hey, maybe because they can just, you know, release a season out there and it's like nine, ten hours, whatever it might be. They think, oh, we're totally getting that for Star Wars. No, no, no. Hold your horses, guys. Maybe this just means they want to take something similar in direction, but maybe try to lengthen that and uh, dive into some different areas of the Star Wars brand that we've never seen before. Maybe it's something from Legends that they're bringing back. So just wait a little bit. Maybe, I don't think this is going to be a trilogy. I think this is going to be something more akin to probably um, what they're doing uh, with the Wizarding World series right now with all that stuff that takes place before Harry Potter. We'll probably get about four or five films uh, starting off, but depending on how the first two films go determines how many more they're going to do. I I thought it was funny that people assumed it was three movies. If you look on Twitter, people are like, now these Mm -hmm. guys get a trilogy. Like Star Wars people are just focused on trilogies. It's funny. So, Bill, I do have an actual question for you, but I, okay. I really I really do want to also, as a side question, I ask you, do, do you think this is the KOTAR? KOTOR? I Since don't even know what it is. I'm not are, a are we doing guy. the do- Are we doing the KOTOR jar for this episode? Or? <laughs> if you say no, it's a it, Republic, you have to put a dollar in the jar. <laughs> fine. I'm going to put that dollar in. Yes, it is a KOTOR movie. First of all, every time anybody says they want a quote unquote Nazi the old Republic. I'm putting the dollar in again. I don't care. It's an um, IOU folks. Say, I can see it. It's a piece yeah, of paper it, it, that says one dollar <laughs> on it. Um whenever anybody says uh they want a Knights of the Old Republic or they want any kind of in that era, uh they always go to oh, I want it in the vein of Game of Thrones 
or they want it in some of that mythology kind of like uh, like it is in like Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. So who better to do it than the people who brought you Game of Thrones? I'm going to jump in. I mean, I, I, as soon as it was announced, I thought, wow, what perfect ca- casting. This yep. seems ca- like yeah. it just came from the fans. Like, okay, yep. they d- absolutely want this. Who's the absolute perfect person to do it? Let's go get them. So continue. Uh- Exactly. And so just to jump off your point, who better to do a Game of Thrones style series than the people that brought you Game of Thrones? You don't have the, what is it, J.R.R. R. Martin or whatever his name is. I don't know. I've watched the third <laughs> season and that's all I've gotten into. Um, but I think this this is an exciting move. And I know there will probably get some uh, some more announcements soon regarding creators of series and stuff like that. But... For what I want, and and not saying that it, it's a hundred percent certain, but I am fairly certain it'll be a older public type film. Um, these are the people you want to get, and I'm very very happy that Lucasfilm noticed that they obviously have the creative chops to to make it happen. Well, I heard they all, they're also bringing Larry David in to do a Star Wars movie about nothing. Bum, so. bum, 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 <laughs> ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. <laughs> what is the deal <laughs> with the castle run? I mean, come on. <laughs> um, Bill, I got one more question for you, and it's going to actually lead into John's question. So just okay. answer me this. Um, do you think that this means that we're not going to get a 10, 11, and 12 episode trilogy oh anytime soon absolutely not that just because you lead into a completely different era doesn't mean that they're gonna not eventually uh go down that road because i think there are obviously still stories to tell in that era so i I definitely don't think that doesn't lead or that leads to that not happening which i think it will okay and pat quickly do you agree I do agree with this. I think we are eventually going to get some stuff in these new movies that might ultimately tie in with the story that might be 10, 11, and 12, or maybe even go back to some sequel trilogy stuff. So uh, the lore is there. It's the right time to be making these moves. I say do it. All right, John. So then here's your here's the final question that I got for you guys. Is the future film that Kathleen Kennedy was deciding on a while back this announcement was it this thing that she was working on does this announcement effectively squash the kenobi movie and a future standalone of spin-offs for the foreseeable future there's a there's a lot coming out right 10 11 12 ryan johnson trilogy this new series um so you're saying does this game of thrones announcement Squash. Everybody a- thought it was the Kenobi movie. Everybody yeah. thought it was maybe a new feature spinoff. No, was think- this that thing that she decided? Did she sway away from Kenobi? No, I still think we're going to get that standalone in 2020 because um, Ryan Johnson's just putting pen to paper. And um, I don't think they're, it would look bad for them to back off of a movie date they already announced was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think exactly. I think that's gonna that's still going to happen. I'm going. I'm moving away. I used to be so dead on set that they were going to do 10, 11, and twelve. Um, but now I've like kind of. I'm gonna be okay with if if they end it for some reason at nine. Leave it. Leave it on the shelf just in case you need it. If these new movies, say the Game of Thrones guys' movies don't do well, something happens with Ryan Johnson's movies, they can go back and saga this thing up and bring in the 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 old uh, the old what old reliable as it were. So that, and I mean, it's and at some point the people that are, that are watching the sequel trilogy now are gonna have just as fond memories as the people who watched the original trilogy or the prequel trilogy. So that's I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. I think people want to see the continuation of seven eight nine and see where that goes and you 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 don't have to bring back luke skywalker or leia or or han to make a compelling star wars movie and to go off your point about kenobi no this absolutely i think it's more likely to happen now i just think it's a matter of time before it announced it it, that kathleen kennedy announces it and I, i think it'll probably be sometime in the summer All right, guys, I got to break in here real quick because we were talking about sagas and trilogies and seven, eight and nine. This was breaking news just a little bit ago. Uh, Straight from Star Wars Newsnet, J.J. Abrams has come out and said he cannot wait to share details on Star Wars Episode Nine here very soon. And he is now headed to Lucasfilm to continue working on that. So that is breaking 
Sorry for hopping in on you, James, but I had to uh, throw that in there real quick. And uh, back to you. Well, once we get more on that story, we'll probably end up covering it um, in a future episode if, if it actually develops into something bigger. Um, yeah, that, thanks for throwing that out there. You heard it as we were <laughs> recording. I think I think that's that wraps up everything that we got for news this week, guys. There was a couple other little stragglers, if you will, that are out there, little nuggets that we want to hear about. So I'm going to send it over to John for the Scoundrels Rundown. All right, this rundown is going to be so quick, it'll be finished in like two parsecs into the Kessel Run. So let's punch it. Harrison Ford, the mentor? 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 Mentor. It appears that way as EW has reported our new Han Solo, Alden Ehrenreich, and director Ron Howard both reached out to the legendary actor for his thoughts on this new take on The Smuggling Scoundrel. Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy had this to say. What Harrison did so beautifully for Alden was he talked a lot about what he remembered when he first read Star Wars and what George had done with Han, who the character was, and the conversations he had for so many years with George about how that character developed. He gave Alden that kind of insight, which was invaluable. There were several times in the course of making the movie where Alden would actually recount some of the things that Harrison had pointed out. I think that was really, really helpful of him. And uh, now from Ron Howard, quote, Harrison's a very thoughtful actor and an artist. And I wanted to know what he learned about the character. He said that Han is always torn between that sense that he was, in a way, an orphan, and therefore both yearned for connection with people and struggled with it at the same time. I thought that was pretty interesting, end quote. Which should harken back to that interview with Aaron Reich, where he, he pretty much said the same thing, so it's ingrained in him, which is a very good sign, fans. Now, fans worried that Han will stray too far from Harrison's take on the character can worry a little less, as now we know Aaron Reich and Ron Howard both sought guidance from the man who first put on the vest. And our last story, happy birthday to the creator of the lifeblood of Star Wars, Mr. John Williams, Woo! the composer of all eight and soon to be nine saga films, as well as the theme for the upcoming Han Solo film, turned 86 this past Thursday. And we wish John the happiest of birthdays as though he were listening to this show. Be sure to listen in Thursday when we debate some of Williams' music in Star Wars Wars. For the full articles of all of our news stories today, head to StarWarsNewsNet.com, where you'll also find reviews, editorials, interviews, and more. Now it's time to see what Pat has brought us back from the question vault. So that is your Scoundrels Rundown for this week. Chewy, get us out of here. <laughs> Guys, we're blowing the door off this question vault once and for <laughs> all. You guys are freaking awesome. The questions this week, I, I don't think I've seen so many questions pour in for one episode more than this one. Even over the saga films, everyone wanted us to answer some stuff about Solo. So here we go. First question comes from Jeremy at Jedi underscore Houdini on Twitter. And he said, do you think that the movie will end with Han and Chewie going to the cantina? Bill, what's your take on this? Well, the way that I am interpreting this question, I, I think he, they're asking uh, if we're going to, if it's going to lead similarly to how Rogue One ended, where it leads right into episode four, which the answer is no. And I, it, I just don't think it'll happen. I don't think that I think that this movie takes place about ten, nine years before yep. a new hope. So I don't think that they're gonna jump around for that amount of time. But we may, and it would not surprise me at all if we saw the Moss Eisley Cantina. It wouldn't surprise me if it ended like they're going into the cantina, but it's not leading into uh, episode four. So, Jeremy, thank you for asking that question. But it, and if if I'm interpreting that question wrong, let me know, and I'll clarify a little bit more. But thank you so much for asking the question. You don't think they can find a male version of Millie Bobby Brown, put some dots on his face, and then uh, make some CG magic happen? Can we end the Millie Bobby Brown stuff? <laughs> <laughs> per- yes, please. We have no beef. Well, I don't. I mean, James, you do, don't you? I'm kidding. All right, guys. Next question. This one comes from Darth Sean at Darth Sean five two five on Twitter, and he asked R B A T S W N N. By the way, thank you. Do you think that Java and Boba Fett are in the movie? And if so, why do you think that Jabba and Boba were not shown in the trailer? You can't save them for the movie. Market the hell out of them to get more butts in the theater. John, how are you feeling about 
Boba Fett and Jabba the Hutt. Well, first, I want to know where the other five, the first 524 Darth Shawns are, because that that makes me <laughs> nervous that there's that many of you out there. Um, but I do, I think Boba Fett will definitely be in this movie. Um, Jabba, I'm not sure. I, I feel I have a feeling we may see Jabba at the end, and we may see him hire Han, and that'll be the beginning of their professional relationship. But Boba Fett, I, I definitely think is going to be in this movie. Now, as far as marketing them, you don't need to do that. Um, this movie will sell itself with the Falcon, with Chewie, with Lando, with mm-hmm. Han. Uh, a loaded cast. You have Ron Howard, Larry Kazan. You don't need to give everyone everything. So when they see the movie and they see Boba Fett and he's utilized the right way and they see Jabba, it'll be even that much bigger of a treat. Uh, if you just blah, just throw everything at everybody, they're going to be like, wow, all right, well, what's left? What am I going to be surprised with in, in this movie? Do you want people saying you need to go see this movie like to Boba Fett fans? Yeah. Like it's not in there. There's a surprise, man. Right, and it's a it's a prequel, so we know the fates of our main characters. So we already know their fates. We we don't need every surprise burst uh, by showing us something in a teaser or trailer. So I think that's why. But I do think they're both going to show up in the movie. I'm going to say ninety five percent Boba Fett and forty percent on Job of the Hut. But uh, thank you, Darth Sean, and keep the other five hundred twenty four of you away from me and my family (laughs) now john since you are on the boba fett hype train here i have a question for you specifically and that is since people have gotten a little bit older in age now how would you feel if they got daniel logan in that boba fett suit and got tamura morrison to voice him uh i don't know i guess i i don't really care yeah get who get anyone in there i mean i'll go i'll hop in the suit Throw me, throw me. How do you say no in Arabash? Yeah, throw me 500 <laughs> bucks. I'll go do the whole thing. Um, no, but uh, I don't, yeah, I don't really care the way. I mean, I, I guess it would be cool for him because he seems to still be involved in the, you know, fandom and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, for continuity doing the voice, I imagine they will do that, uh, getting Morrison in there. Um, so if we do see Boba Fett and he does have dialogue, I can almost guarantee that that guy's voice will be doing it. Um, it would just make too much sense. And I, I don't mm-hmm. think he's making uh, Jack Nicholson money, so it'll be probably easy to lock him down. <laughs> <laughs> and our final question comes from Kylo Ten at Fulcrum Andor, and she asked, who do you think will die in this movie, and how will the characters that don't die be taken out of the picture for the original trilogy? James, what's your take? Um, I think as far as deaths go, I got three main uh, victims, if you will. I think that uh, Woody Harrelson's character, Beckett, is a prime candidate. I think that uh, it's important to see this character um, really emotional, like affect uh, Han and be removed from the picture. He's passing on the torch to this kid and then he's going to go. And I've actually predicted that from a, a long, long time. Just when we heard that Woody Harrelson was cast, he's going to play a father type figure. I think that could be the thing that potentially uh, messes him up. Now for the same reason, I think that maybe Amelia Clark's character is on that chopping block as well. Um, this is someone that he apparently grew up with and he has a a long time affection for. So if her character is killed off, um, which she even states in her interview, as we talked about earlier, she's, there's a reason she's not in the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. So that kind of sets her up for the possibility of being killed. Um, and the last one that I actually have to throw out there, I think is probably the villain because I think that this story is going to be a beginning to end closure. Like I think, uh, by the end of it, we're going to feel like there was some accomplishment, much like an MCU film. I know it's all connected, but for the most part, the villains get defeated at the end of the movie. So I think that he will be defeated or possibly locked up i guess but most likely killed in some cool big explosion as far as everybody else being explained how are they not going to show up i think that stuff is simple man not everybody is as important to the galactic civil war as you would think so i know we've talked about that um john privately before and we've had that debate honestly i think that the original movies focused on a core group of people and even if they are involved we just didn't see them in the original movies they don't have to be on screen to be part of a major rebellion against the what if they, empire what if they all open their own delis <laughs> yeah, that'd be great <laughs> just like grand admiral holdo 
John always goes on with this uh, ongoing inside joke that nobody gets about how all the characters were in a deli because uh, we talked about it off camera and he brings it up like as if the listeners know what's going on. So guys, some of the, like, three uh, don't of them listen. Know. Yeah, don't uh, get three of them. Me, Bill and uh, Pat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if there are any artists out there who want to give their depiction of Holdo's Deli, show us on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. So those are my answers. I think those are the three on the chopping block. And as far as everybody else, I think you can easily explain them away. They're there or they just left to go do something else. Not a big problem. I got to agree with you here, James, uh, to some extent, because um, as we've learned, uh, a lot of fans didn't take kindly to the entire cast of Rogue One dying by the end of the film. And that was kind of like a big, like, ooh, like moment. What were they supposed Deep to down, do? Deep down, we I mean, knew. like, they're, we don't see him again. We knew. Maybe the general audience didn't necessarily take too kindly to that, though. You know, like, not the super hardcore mm-hmm. fans. They were like, wait a minute, what? The whole entire team is dead? Not even one got away? Like, what's going on here? So I feel like you, to some extent, could be right here. I could see maybe Kira or somebody else going away. We don't see Lando in A New Hope, but we know he comes back later in Episode Five. I mean, people go in different directions, and that's totally fine. Technically, we don't know where Hera was uh, from Rogue One up to where she apparently survives in Episode Six, and uh, like we saw in Forces of Destiny. So these are things to consider. People do go in different directions. You don't have to kill everyone. All right, guys, I would like to personally thank all of you for sending in your Twitter questions. Uh, We will try to get some more of those up next week. They're going to currently be locked in the questions vault for then and beyond. If you haven't sent us a question, you got something on your mind that you want us to answer, send those to us on Twitter at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N, just like Darth Sean tweeted at us. Or you can also send questions to us at resistancebroadcast at gmail.com, or let us know in the comments below this episode on Star Wars Newsnet. Back to you, John. Yeah, keep those questions and tweets coming. Pat is constantly in the vault. I know he said he busted the door down. I just ordered another one on Amazon. We're going to have it up. We'll get him locked in there to make sure the questions I'm staying out this grabbed. week. Hell no. It gets hot in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to keep grabbing those questions, though. So if yours hasn't been answered yet, keep them coming. Yours may be next. Be sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. And like our episodes on SoundCloud and YouTube. Head over to our store, tpublic.com slash user slash resistance broadcast, and pick up some resistance broadcast apparel from t-shirts, coffee mugs, stickers, posters, and more. It's the best way to support the show. The bad news is our Kylo Ren Supreme Leader shirt has vanished like a pair of force projection dice. But we have plenty of designs still available. I'm actually wearing our Gary the Pork shirt right now. For all of your latest Star Wars news, reviews, editorials, and information, go to our website, starwarsnewsnet.com. Hey, James, where can people find you on the interwebs? You can find me always at Myra Trunks, M-I-R-A-H-T-R-U-N-K-S. That's at Twitter and Instagram. I'm going to be hanging out. I'm going to be answering more questions. I actually had a pretty interactive tweet about lock screens. So if you want to hit me up about phones and lock screens and Apple stuff, I'm always willing to talk about that stuff too. Right on. Pat, where can people hit you up? You guys can find me on Twitter at Gano136 and also over on the Cantina Forum under the same name. Love hearing your guys' feedback. I'm going to keep trying to grind through some more of the canon stuff. Uh, I've been trying to catch up for the past few weeks, and hopefully, maybe soon, someday, I'll get there. And the only Star Wars Bill on Twitter that I know of, Bill, where can people find you on social media? You guys can find me on Twitter at Star Wars Bill. Next week, I'm going to be very, very active because I'm going on my friend's show, my bourbon podcast and i'll shout out a link on my twitter over the next week you can find me there i'm also going to be writing the reviews for star wars rebels that are for the rest of the series i'm very excited to do that so look out for that thank you so much for listening and may the force be with you sweet and i'm john hoey you can find me on twitter at johnny hoey and writing articles and editorials at starwarsnewsnet.com you can also find me right back here in three days on thursday because we're doing two episodes a week now folks be ready keep up I'll also be in New York City this Saturday for the Hasbro Toy Fair, and I'll be writing up a report on StarWarsNewsNet.com with all the cool Solo and other Star Wars items that I see, and I'm going to do my best to try to steal a Force Effects lightsaber, and hopefully I don't get arrested. So hopefully you guys uh, still hear me on the podcast. If not, I'm in jail, so bust me out.
Thank you for listening and supporting the show. Please keep spreading the word to your friends, family, teachers, coworkers, dogs, anyone you know that likes Star Wars. Be sure to listen to our episode this Thursday as we'll talk about the Falcon's new look, the new Star Wars TV shows, and we'll debate specific Star Wars musical scores in Star Wars Wars. So make sure you are subscribed so you're alerted with our next transmission Thursday morning right here on the Resistance Broadcast. 